used to sit on the picnic table and pretend I was flying my car. Dwight Farmer's dream of owning a Jetsons-like car is not a reality right now, but the researcher studies vehicles that get him halfway there, self-driving cars. I think it's clear roadways will become much, much safer than they are today. Farmer says developers have made incredible strides in how self-driving technology tracks and predicts problems on the road. And some are getting into the ethical questions of, well, then this computer's got to make a decision to hit the shopping cart or the child. That capability, we're on the verge of having that capability. Farmer says most people think about the benefit of not having to touch a steering wheel when it comes to self-driving cars, but he says a system-wide change could have another impact that a lot of people aren't thinking about. We could easily double the capacity of existing infrastructure. That means more cars would fit on existing highways. Farmer says programmed vehicles would mean greater space between each car, which he says would make our highways more efficient. But the self-driving vehicle industry still faces speed bumps. This Ohio man was killed when his Tesla on autopilot slammed into a semi. The first fatality involving a self-driving vehicle. Not to mention many drivers we spoke with say giving up control of their car would be hard. You know, the windows, the locks. Michael Wynn's 2001 Chevy Malibu is far from automated. Like many, he's curious but skeptical about this generation of self-driving vehicles. Like I said, once they become more vehicles instead of prototypes, then it could become more realistic. Jake Burns, CBS 6 News.